When I went to visit the National Video Game Museum in Texas, I pretty much went into it not knowing what all they had. But, to my surprise, they did have a bunch of rare items. Things like the Nintendo World Championships card, a whole shrine dedicated to Action 52, and in the computer section, the topic of today's video. When you go into the computer section, you look up to the top shelf and notice a box console that is huge, with the word Atom attached to it. During the second generation of gaming, there were many companies looking to get into the market that the Odyssey 1 brought forth. Names like the Atari 2600, the Intellivision, Odyssey 2, and Vectrix to name a few. Many hours were spent on these consoles and would even bring in a whole new experience for entertainment. That's where Coleco comes into play, as they would release the ColecoVision and that home computer. On this edition of the Uncommon Valley, we look at the time that Coleco became overambitious with the release of the Coleco Atom, regarded as one of the worst sold home computers of all time. The company Coleco threw their hat into the ring and joined the video game market in 1976 and would begin releasing Pong units under the name Telestar. They would later release tabletop LCD versions of popular arcade titles and would eventually beat out rival company Mattel in the sales by releasing handheld gaming systems based on simplicity and overall fun factor. While the market was in a period where oversaturation was a major issue, they looked to start developing for the home console market that at the time was mainly dominated by Atari and Intellivision. Eric Brimley would become the lead engineer in the development of the ColecoVision project. With RAM becoming more affordable to produce in 1981, they began to proceed with the production of the console for a possible holiday release. They were also looking to beef up the lineup of games with more of the arcade titles that were out at the time, and looked to Nintendo for a deal in bringing over their titles to their system. While the deal went back and forth between both parties, they were able to secure the rights to port over Donkey Kong, which would eventually become the packing game with the system. The ColecoVision would be on the market until 1983, and would sell around only 2 million units worldwide. But that was not the only time that Coleco would throw their hat into the ring, as around the same year, they would focus on a completely different market, the home computer. And what they had planned would bring down their eventual fall from grace. So it begs the question, how is it a company that was doing so well with their ColecoVision console and even the tabletop systems, were not able to do well with home computers. You would think that it was a big shift at that time as everybody was wanting to capitalize on that success. But unfortunately, it wasn't good for Coleco as there would be many things that would plague its release. And it all starts with its inevitable reveal. The Coleco Atom would be unveiled during CES of June in 1983, and would have a high prediction of around 500,000 units sold by this year's Christmas, and would also be bundled with its printer for a retail cost of $725. It would begin garnering high praise from the press, which would cause both Commodore and Atari to announce their own computer and printer bundles to counter the Atom's announcement. Coleco was determined to make this a success, 
and would begin dumping tons of money in advertisements in various magazine publications like Time and People magazine and even various television commercials being marketed towards 8 to 16 year olds and fathers. The Boston Phoenix would state the Adams price was in comparison with the lowest price printers of at the time, and would also go on to state that it would be a nice tactic if they could actually pull it off. That unfortunately was not far off from the actual truth, as the units that were shown on the show floor were being shown behind tinted glass that had handmade units with non-working drives. So they were initially selling the promise that would be able to perform high programming at a reasonable price. By June, they were scheduling shipments of the Atom by August, and made its initial promise of selling the half a million units by the holiday season. Problems for this would start right around August and would begin missing deadlines of September and October. The reason for the delays was because of printers being ready for shipment and would miss the holiday launch due to failed demonstrations. And even with Coleco's CEO Arnold Greenberg's broken promise of shipping everything on time. And he even stated it's not primarily a Christmas item. It wouldn't stop there as more negative press was piling on even more as publications like InfoWorld reported on how the Coleco Atom was garnering skepticism with its reliability, and if it was going to deliver on its promises. This on top of the fact that no review units were shipped out for publications to put out before Christmas and retailers like JCPenney and Kmart were not going to sell any units due to lack of availability. This would make matters worse for the company as by the end of December, only 95,000 units would be shipped, with almost all that were purchased would see heavy returns due in part to faulty hardware. Coleco would partner with Honeywell Information Systems to have repair shops open nationwide and would begin fixing any issues they had. The negative press train kept rolling as reports of company executives during one news conference was avoiding answering questions of numerous issues that had plagued the production delays and the many defective units that were sold to retailers. The company would deny this, saying that the defects were well below industry standards and were only 10% of the total units shipped out. Unfortunately, by the start of the new year in 1985, Coleco would officially discontinue all sales of the production for the Atom software and hardware, and would begin liquidating all remaining inventory. While the official number of the units sold is not confirmed, one analyst did state that from 83 to 84, over 350 units were overall sold. Along with this, Coleco revealed that they had sustained major losses of profit, and by the time of the launch for the Coleco Atom, it would have lost over $35 million, and an additional $13.4 million in repairs and returns during the first nine months on the market. With it heavily undersold on so many broken promises, it has been regarded as one of the biggest disasters ever documented in all of tech. So that, unfortunately, is the history of the Coleco Atom. A bit of a disaster piece, but had it actually had working units? Could have been one of the best ways for families to get into home computers without breaking an arm and a leg to get into it. But Coleco was just recovering from the video game crash, and on top of all of the issues that they were receiving, they had so many broken promises. They were just worried about losing out on money that could have been gone over to Commodore or Atari. But alas, we may never know if it would have actually done better had it actually been properly released. But, let me know if you've ever had a Coleco Atom, or if you knew of a neighbor that had a lot of money that owned one. Because nowadays, these are really hard to find in working condition. But if you're able to, not spend too much, you might actually have a nice home computer. If you're into old tech, that is. 
But alas, that is unfortunately this edition of the Uncommon Valley. Thank you for watching as we look to the past into the present.